I thank the chair. The amendment that uh, I'm offering reduces the salary of Cypress Salazar, the director of the Department of Defense's Office for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, to $1. Now, you might ask, why, why would we do that? Uh, it's a power that we have in the House of Representatives under the Holman Rule to try to restrain uh, the executive branch, both in terms of expense, dollars, how they're being used, and in terms of what they're being used for. Uh, the American people are frankly getting a little tired of a Department of Defense that is being taken far too often off mission. I hear it all the time. I hear it from veterans. I hear it from active duty. I hear it from recruits with recruiting numbers at low levels, with morale at questionable levels. We need to reinstill in our military a crystal clear focus on mission first. And importantly, when we are to use the gentlelady's terms, which I take to heart, uh, pinching pennies and trying to find dollars because we need to stop racking up $33 trillion in debt when we can't even figure out how to fund the salaries of our rank and file men and women in uniform at the level that we might need to, when we're dealing with the issues of increasing health costs, when we're dealing with the issues of needing to have a fully uh, uh, armed military with the latest and greatest technologies to defeat China, then it would seem questionable that, for example, we would have positions like the following. The Air Force is looking for a supervisory diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility officer in Arlington, Virginia that will pay between $155,700 to $183,500 per year. Another one, the Air Force is looking for a diversity inclusion manager to work at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland, which pays between $94,199 to $122,459 per year. Another position in Alaska, another position in Alabama. I could go down the list, and this is the top of that pyramid. And what we're trying to say is we shouldn't do this. We need to stop this. We need to stop diverting the mission of the military, which a laudable goal of ensuring you've got a uh, workforce that is representative of the population of this country. Uh, you don't need an entire bureaucracy within the Pentagon to do it that is then perpetuating a lot of divisive policies. For example, West Point Academy slides told cadets that whiteness is, quote, a location of structural advantage of race privilege, a standpoint or place from which white people look at themselves and the rest of society and refers to a set of cultural practices that are usually unmarked and unnamed. Another, Kalisa Wing, former chief diversity officer at DOD schools, tweeted, quote, I'm so exhausted at these white folks, F-O-L-X, in these professional development sessions, this lady actually had the caudacity to say black people can be racist too, end quote. This is not the kind of thing that should be going on at the United States military and the Pentagon. This is one step of many that we need to take to return the military to its core mission and end this social engineering wrapped in a uniform rather than doing the job of defending this great country. I reserve. The gentleman reserves. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Minnesota seek recognition? Madam Chair, I rise in opposition to this amendment. The gentlewoman is recognized. So Cyrus Valazar, as been pointed out, is the director of the Department of Defense for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and charged with promoting diversity within the DOD. The department has a responsibility to make sure all Americans are welcomed in the service of our nation and that it reflects our, uh, the America's defense. I worked in the private sector until basically, I mean, I served part-time in city councils and that, but I worked in the private sector until I came here to Congress. And so I have, still have a lot of friends in the private, private sector um, the, where I represent 3M, um, right across the river in Minneapolis, General Mills, Target, I could go on and on with, with the companies that we have. And these companies are competing for talent, um, whether it is the, the, the person who um, is, is helping you at the Target store with a checkout, or whether it's uh, the person that is uh, you know, being recruited to go into teaching, or a person who is going to become a CEO, or a compliance officer, or a bank auditor. We're all competing for workforce right now. 
and our labor trades are competing for workforce. So there's fewer and fewer people kind of entering the workforce, and, and so there's a great competition going on. And these companies have diversity op offices so that they're going out and talking to uh, groups that maybe have never uh, been in, in industry before. And I'll use the building trades again. So in our building trades, um, our, they, they are knocking down the doors, going to our high schools. They have people just working on diversity, saying these are great paying jobs, let me tell you about them. Maybe nobody in your family's been been a, a plumber, maybe nobody in your family's been an electrician or a pipe fitter, or maybe uh, you've, you've never worked road construction. These are great jobs for you, but they are going out and they are recruiting these people. And we're up against the same challenge of recruitment and retention that the private sector is. In fact, we're competing for, for the same workforce. So of, of course, in my opinion, we need to be doing some of this diversity and inclusion. And the, the gentleman from Texas, when he uh, quoted what was said at, at West Point, I totally agree with him. Those are horrific statements, and that person's gone, and they, they should be gone. But the DOD is struggling with a challenge. And right now, our civilian workforce doesn't reflect the diversity of, of, of other federal agencies. So we're trying to uh, get more women, more, more, more men, more everybody in this country to know that the DOD is a great place to work and that once you're, once you're there, you're going to love the job and we're going to give you those tools on the toolbox to do it. I, I will close, close with this. Um, one of the things that I've been working on is cybersecurity and IT and um, linguistics. And I come from a culturally rich district. I, I have people, we have, you come to University Avenue in St. Paul and the diversity of the restaurants and the small, small businesses that are there, it'll blow your mind away. It's rich in diversity. But we still find, even with, with all being in the same neighborhoods and communities, we still have to do outreach to say you're welcome. And one of those places is cybersecurity. So a lot of these businesses are being hacked. They're having issues with it. And we're going to um, the, the high schools and, and, and the community colleges, and we're looking at folks like, there is a place for you in cybersecurity. And they're like, me? Yeah, you. They, sometimes people need to be welcomed in. They need to have the opportunity to be recruited. So, um, I, I really think that uh, having someone that oversees opportunity, equal opportunity, diversity inclusion, uh, making sure that disability programs, I mean we have our service members who, who come back and sometimes have to be relocated into uh, another position or a job, that's what this office can do. And so I know we've gotten down this track of how we can divide ourselves talking about diversity and inclusion. I want us to embrace it in a way to have a more unified uh, workforce and to recruit and retain the best and the brightest to work in the Department of Defense. And with that, Madam Chair, uh, I'm just gonna yield back because I think we've had this discussion over and over again today. Thank you. Gentleman yields, or gentlewoman yields back. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. I thank the Chair. The United States military is one of the few institutions in America where the skills of the men uh, or uh, women on either side of you could mean the difference between life and death. And at the end of the day, it embodies, I think, Dr. King's notion of judging men and women on the content of their character, not the color of their skin. Yet the Biden administration is infatuated with divvying us up by race, with divvying us up by our immutable characteristics. The fact is, with, with all due respect, and I, and I, I appreciate the gentlelady's remarks and the tone of, of, in which they were offered, corporate America is slashing DEI officers amid a backlash to diversity programs across the country. Story right here about the numbers of how many offices have been being slashed over the last year, in part, in part because they don't, add, they don't add much value to the bottom line in a world in which the economy is hurting and people are suffering, and also in part because they're getting a backlash to having so much focus on divvying us up by race and all these Thank characteristics you. that it's not actually good. Uh, and we're seeing this in countless corporations across the country. Story after story, if you just Google it and see what's going on out there, I think the Department of Defense should uh, be in line with where I think we're seeing our society recoil 
at this divvying us up by race, and this is one way to accomplish that objective, and with that, I will yield back. The gentleman yields back. The question on the